Le Chatelier's principle is a pretty fancy sounding name for a relatively easy to understand concept, which I put into my own words here. If a system in dynamic equilibrium is disturbed, the system will move to balance out the effects of the disturbance. And we can see that through concentration, pressure, and temperature. Well, this kind of goes along with volume too. So let me just make some space for myself here and come up with a bunch of example problems for us to do. All right, so we're given a set of reactions and what we have to do is say what happens when the disturbance is applied to the reaction. So first of all, we have N2O4 gas in dynamic equilibrium with two moles of NO2 gas. And we have to say what happens when we increase the pressure. So what we do is we look at the moles of gas on each side. So over here, we have one mole of gas. Over here, we have two moles of gas because of this coefficient. And when we increase the pressure, that means we're decreasing the volume. So we're adding pressure to it and it's going to be compressed. So the container that this system is in is going to decrease in size. So what it's going, what's going to happen is we're going to shift from the side with more moles of gas to less moles of gas because that takes up less space and that's more favorable in a container that's more compact. So this equation or this system is going to shift to the left and produce more reactants. Okay, so next one. We have CO and NO2 in dynamic equilibrium with CO2 and NO. And what we're going to do is add some NO. So we're going to increase the concentration of NO2. And that, since it's on the left side of the equation, that's going to shift it to the right. Because now we have too many reactants, the concentration of NO2 is too high, so it's going to shift over and make some more products to balance that disturbance out. So it's going to favor the right side of the equation and favor the products. Pretty easy, right? So the last one is, um, I just put in some letters to instead of actual compounds, and we're going to have one mole of A and two moles of B in dynamic equilibrium with C and D. And over here, we're given that the equation is exothermic. The forward reaction is exothermic, I mean, because uh, delta H is negative, meaning that it's going to release energy. And that means when a reaction releases energy, that means it's exothermic. So when it's exothermic, then heat is going to be released as a product. That looks kind of messy. So heat is going to be released as a product. So when we increase the temperature, think of it like how we did this last one when we added NO2 on the left side of the equation, it shifted to the right. So when we increase the temperature, so we'll pretend that heat is like a reactant in this situation. When we increase it, it's on the right. So we have too many products now, and now we have to go back to the left. So it's going to shift left and favor the reactant side. So that's basically what Le Chatelier's principle is. When you have too much of one thing, go to the opposite side to balance it out. And when you increase or decrease pressure, go to the side where there's either less or more uh, moles of gas.